That's okay, like, go for a take. Have a look. Take one. We need like a theme tune. Action. Right. We are going for a take where we get the take of those who work in the film and TV industry on a specifically chosen film and about their time in the business. Yep, and today's take is another special episode double bill of Megalopolis, a fable, and Joker. How's it pronounced? Folie de. Folie de. Folie de. Folie de. Uh, and this is your spoiler warning for both. Big yep. spoiler warnings as well. You've been warned. Mm. You've been warned. And it was that good we had to do it twice. Oof. Or was Tough it? Hits, but in today's episode, we're joined with Corey McLean. Woo! 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 How you doing, bro? Are you good? I'm good, man. Thanks good, for having good. me. I'm excited Thank you. to have you on for this. It's gonna uh, be vibes. This vibe. guy is phenomenal. Like, honestly, one of the Ooh. best actors that I've seen. <laughs> love, like... I just love how like you experiment. You got so much play, and uh, you're just lapping this up now, aren't you? Thank you. Yeah, I had to green, drink some more green tea. <laughs> yeah. I had to get in the zone. Get some more caffeine. Um, but yeah, I mean, even when we're talking about doing this double bill, we we're like first name Corey, because uh, a self-proclaimed <laughs> film geek, same as the rest of us. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, let's man. nerd out a little bit. Let's mm-hmm. nerd out on mm-hmm. these indie films. Or not so Which... indie. <laughs> Well, Big budget. We want to start with. I mean, let's let's talk about Joker. 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 Yeah. Oh, the thing is, it. though, Joker feels like an indie film, but the budget, mm. the budget, uh-huh. is just colossal. And I heard, I feel like the the second film was like triple of the first, mm. and that's like that's insane because triple, triple, really, maybe yeah. a triple. Yeah. Sorry, I've had so much caffeine. Uh-huh. <laughs> what, what, why? I, I, but the thing is, I feel like you can do an amazing film, especially when it comes to the Joker, with probably half that. But I feel like because of the, the musical elements to it, it just shot the budget mm. up and, tenfold. Yeah. And what did you think of the musical elements in it? Well, I feel like Lady Gaga is amazing. She's really talented. I think she's fantastic. I think her acting's amazing as well. Mm, yeah. I feel like her being an amazing singer probably helped with her acting. I feel like she can use her voice so well. Mm. And she's actually absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Mm. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I just didn't... You know what I mean? You, you listen to a singer, but sometimes you don't picture a sing. You don't put the face to the voice. But no, Lady Gaga is absolutely amazing. I feel like the musical scenes, they were nice, but I don't know if they really helped the actual story. Mm. Um, that, yeah. That was my issue with it was, I thought it was a great risk to take was to do something like that. I think I heard a quote by um, by uh, Todd Phillips and he was like, the first film, there was a lot of dancing and that was his way of expression. Mm. But once he'd found someone, he was able to express the music inside of him verbally through mm. music mm. rather than dancing through music inside of him and at the the film the way it went with the music and making it a musical if you want to call it that it was it was <laughs> definitely interesting it <laughs> um i think it frustrated me because the acting was great and the really juicy moments i was like oh what's going to happen and then they just burst into a song and i'd be like mm, because i just wanted it to go carry on going that way and that was, r- it was yeah. frustrating man. and like if he did burst into song and dance let him actually do it like he's having a psychotic episode mm-hmm. and not let it be in his head um i think mm-hmm. from, from the beginning when they were in the prison and they were walk they were transferring him uh the umbrellas were black and then they changed to a different color mm-hmm. from them from that point on i was like right so i i don't know what's what's real or what's not now mm-hmm. so it it, it I, yeah, I, I, I didn't really know what, what to make of it. Yeah, I, again, I was so frustrated with the film and gutted because obviously it's like a beloved character. I love the first one so much. And I I came out the cinema and even in the cinema, I was like, again, exactly the same as you. The story mm. felt like it went and then it was exciting. And I'll call this drama and conflict and all the stuff that is like juicy to like watch. Um, and then it just stopped. Mm. And we went to a little song break. I don't mind if that song would have a story element to it. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. Sometimes it helped and lent like some sort of like insight into his inner brain or whatever. Um, but also they could have made it shorter. Mm. You didn't have to hear the whole three minute song mm-hmm. of, I mean, Joachim Phoenix isn't a great singer. That's fine. <gasps> the joke is Breaking just, news. Joaquin Fint <laughs> isn't really a good singer. We <laughs> said it died. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't mind if like the character isn't a great singer. You know, maybe yeah. Joaquin Phoenix is a good singer. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I don't mind if the Joker um, or yeah. Arthur Fleck isn't. But it's really painful to listen to that like 10 times, three minute song interlude. 
however many times through it when you just get into the juice of like the conflict yeah, and what's going yeah. on you're in a story and then it's like pause let's do this dancey dance and yeah. then we're going to resume the story like five minutes later yeah but yeah. it adds it, it adds more time to the film and when i saw the the, the viewing time because i was in a rush after the film hmm. two hours 19 minutes i was like wow, i mean wow a lot's gonna happen then right in in many different areas mm. in the film, we're going to go to Arkham. We're going to go and see this character. Then Arthur's going to break out really early, and then he's going to do something jokery. Mm. But it all was mainly in you know the courtroom and Arkham. Yeah. yeah. And again, like do you know uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They did like a show. <laughs> I know that one. Uh, you know the the <laughs> short the paper on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, an indie, it's an indie film. Um, they did a short film. Uh, of that, I did a little short film after the Into the Spider Verse. They did a short film after just to like, like, like uh, episodes in the streets or whatever. It's something cool. was called something like that. I felt like this was one of those sort of things where they, they played around, and it was like a short film. It didn't feel like a second film. It mm. felt like a short film. Yeah. Mm. Like we're gonna play around, and we're gonna add some musical elements into this short musical film. Yeah. But they turn it into a they it turn it into a sequel. In terms of video games, it felt like a DLC. A DLC. Lady Gaga was an unlockable character. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Literally. You know what I mean? It's like a Fortnite <laughs> skin. A, a bonus map in Arkham Asylum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Batman I mean? Arkham Knight, yeah. man. Yeah. Like, yeah, she was a Harley Quinn yeah. skin. She started yeah. singing. Yeah. That was a special attack. <laughs> Literally. Such a good way of it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it, uh, it worked. And yeah. the, like, if it was a one-off singing, great. It yeah. would have been, I'll be like, okay, this is interesting. They've taken a risk here and it works effectively. It didn't work effectively for the whole two hours and what, 15 minutes? I mean, yeah. If, if I was to ask you guys, like I have my own idea in my head of what this is. What would you say the actual story is? The actual important beats in the story? That's a good that's, question. That, that's what... Probably condense it to like an hour, right? Yeah, you can maybe pick maybe four points in the film and be like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And that's it. You follow um, Arthur and he's like, Oh, I'm. So, I don't want to be the Joker anymore. He's, he's kind of like he's, yeah. he don't joke anymore. And then he's like, "No, I am the Joker." Mm. And then the film ends, and he goes, "I'm not the Joker." And that's kind of it. And then the Joker gets killed. I, I feel like, like I wanted more yeah. of his moment where you start to see him go, "Oh shit, I'm really not the Joker. I don't want to be this character anymore." Mm. I was thinking about this before it came, and another film that does it really well would be like Fight Club. Mm. You know, when he realizes that there's yeah. this alter mm. ego and stuff, and he doesn't want to be associated with the violence mm -hmm. anymore. That would have been so much more interesting if like the a, mob and Harley Quinn and like they all just try yeah. and force him to be this. But I felt like it was like the last yeah. 10 minutes he was like, I, I, would have, oh, I don't want to be Joker anymore. I would have really enjoyed like a whole story of them going out into the city of Gotham and, yeah. you know, do, doing Jokery stuff. As and the having, Joker. As the Joker. Seen, yeah, we've not seen him as the Joker. Having that split personality as well that yeah. he's battling with. Yeah. But even uh, if like that would have been so much. through the film, you yeah. start to see him go, like the Joker yeah. personas start to fade and Arthur Fleck start to come out more. Mm. I, don't I think know if I clap that. I, I think it's a, a battle of two people in one body. Um, you could say that in terms of Folly of Doers, in, in terms of both of them, or you could say it in terms of Lady Gaga's character, Harley Quinn, mm -hmm. and yeah. Joker. But the, the difficult thing for me was it, I can see where the story was going. And I could see what the idea was and the idea worked. And like you were saying, it was too long for that idea. And mm -hmm. I would have liked to see that courtroom scene then expand into something else and not be the last 10 minutes where it gets intense. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, the, the court scene should have been the end of the yeah. film, wrapping everything up. I did this, and I did that, and I'm, I'm not proud of it. I'm blah, 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 blah. Mm. But it, you know, it was, again, it could have been, I could have split it. You could have split that up into maybe a, a, an episode, an episodic thing. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I do want to touch upon is at the start of the film, the psychiatrist was like, there's a sort of fragmentation to his personality. And I think that's a really big thing. When I, when I heard that, I was like, oh my God. Because I think about like, you know, Inside Out 2, with the yeah. split personality, like mm. the different parts of you. That's what I was thinking about I when it comes to... Oh my God, what a film. It, it, oh yeah. my God. That... I wanted to like ugly cry at least three times. <laughs> <laughs> Most I underrated film I watched this year. But you know, regardless, like the, the um, fragmentation of a personality because yeah. of trauma, which is kind of what I... What I understood from that film like mm. he did that because he was in severe pain yeah. that 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 joker coping. yeah it was a coping mechanism and in the end it kind of comes full circle where in a way he embraces it he's yeah. like uh i'm you know the joker's a part of me but i did it mm. like i mm. and i enjoyed it sort of thing yeah uh yeah going off that i remember because i did some research on like dissociative identity disorder way back in i was like high school and we wrote a play about it sorry i did as well in high school 
Ben, did you also? <laughs> yes. This is also, this is just an episode of like, <laughs> social. Like, I, 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 I have a whole book. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a book, and I just I just read it because it's you know, fascinating. Look. There's an artist. Oh, I can't remember her name. It, it, first name begins. It's Kim, but basically she's a painter and. She, again, like you're saying, a lot of these people with this disorder, you know, suffered abuse when they were younger. Mm. Um, and when she paints, each different personality has a different painting style, which is insane to think about. Not insane, sorry, wrong kind of word, but just amazing to think about. Like, the, there's literally different characters living within inside, mm. inside, inside of the body. That's why there's uh, painting therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know if part of that that point in the film and also the ending where it turns out big spoiler i mean so at the start but he's not mm. the joker or he's like a first I, iteration of it i think it was <laughs> I, th I think it was less a uh, dissociative identity disorder and more um the fact that he he only, he only ever receives love when he's joker when he's playing a character and not Arthur mm. yeah which yeah. you know and we're in it we're in an industry right where mm. we are obviously on, on screen we're acting and there is sort of maybe an inclination, depending on the, in the nuances, but there's an inclination to maybe play a part outside of that because you're perceived that way. Mm -hmm. and I feel like with the Joker, that's definitely the case because um, in a way it can be quite addictive. Oh my God, I'm loved for this 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 exile part. I mean, yeah. this yeah. part that I created, I'm loved for it. Mm. And imagine getting that appreciation of like, I'm loved for this part of me that kills oh my god it's kind of like in a way it's like rome it's like you know yeah. in a way but like it's like, it's like what sorry Ro i don't know in a way like rome i don't know why it's like that. power in terms yeah, of yeah like yeah it, yeah it just came to my head like it's kind of like rome but it's like your love for the part that you know you killed someone you're loved for you're loved for that part mm. but then once that part goes like who are you with that that thing and you realized he was literally just a a, uh, not a weak man just but, a guy trying to cope with... just trying to cope but he was powerless he was he was so powerless he flipped the script and became this persona where mm. everything's okay and i can do what i want mm. which i feel like we all to a certain degree we everyone does and um yeah well what's that spoke to me there's a there's a, what's that quote about three faces you have the face you are when you're by yourself the one mm. you are with your family and the one you're out when you're at public yeah mm -hmm. and it's that it's that thought of um you you change depending on where you are mm. and for obviously the joker and alpha fleck he he was the joker when he was in public mm. he was alpha fleck when he was by himself yeah and i think that's important because it was the public that spurred him on to be the joker or the personification of the joker because i think the joker in this film isn't one person i think it's a it's an ideology. It's an ideology. And, and he realizes at the end that Harley never loved him. Mm. No. She loved the Joker. That'd Steve, destroy. Yeah. Can you imagine mm, yeah. what that would do? Yeah. When you finally find someone you love or feel loved, because the guy he was never loved in his entire life, even by his mum. Oh. So the point where he killed his own mum. And then you find someone and then like that song comes out and all of that. You find someone and then they love the part of you which isn't you. The mm. part of you which you're trying to... It's hurt, it's like, yeah. It's hurt. It's the hurting part. And it's they not, love that. Yeah. But the whole, they, they don't love the whole piece. Mm -hmm. And I think a real relationship anyway, you've got to love the whole mm. the whole mm. thing mm -hmm. because you don't get... In a way, you, you know, those three faces, you don't get the same... In a way, personality every day with every person all the time. Yeah. You get days where you're tired or you're in pain or you're sad. And, you know, you have one person in his life that loved yeah. him. And she... You know, again, broke his heart. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if they wanted to do a third film, you could have you could have done a third film where he was heartbroken mm -hmm. by by the loss of Harley Quinn and mm -hmm. then destroyed Gotham or something like that. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, they had three endings apparently as well. Three endings. Really? Three endings. Three and faces. I, I'd love to find. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey. Uh, <laughs> what were those endings? Um, so I saw a clip of one of them, and Lady Gaga was dancing down the steps, just those big steps. Oh yeah, yeah. Kicks and stuff. He, she was dancing. They used that in the tree though. Right? Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's not. But they didn't use it. Apparently, it's part of, was one of the endings. But other than the last, we don't know what the other ending was. I, mean, I guess we'll never know unless they deleted. I don't know the extended the Schneider cut. The, <laughs> so Todd Phillips director's cut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. hey, they might, they never say never. That could. To, to be fair me. though, talking about Todd Phillips, uh, what I did like about this film was the risk. And we've talked about it on the podcast a lot, but the risk he took, because the first film was the first R-rated movie to reach a billion on the box office. Wow. Like it's it's incredible. And he could have they could have easily taken that and continued the story yeah, in that way and would have made a, a lot of money from it. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to take the risk of doing something interesting that hasn't been done. Mm. And 
I think they did it and I think I, I respected the risk. I just, it was frustrating because it felt like it was too much of a risk and yeah. it was like marma, like you it were saying. It didn't, mm -hmm. didn't pay off. Mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, the risk, yeah, you got to um, applaud the risk. And yeah. also, again, just listening to what you guys were saying, I think the concept was there. Mm. I think all the ideas he had in terms of like the heartbreak of people, again, the first film's kind of like um, he becomes his personality because that's what his mom told him to be. Like, what is it? It's like a line about you have to make people happy or something like mm. that. Yeah. And that's what he bases his whole identity on. Yeah. And then the second one, <clears throat> excuse me, is also about, you know, basing his whole identity and then being rejected. Yeah when he starts to find his truer self, I guess. At one point, um, I thought he was, like, pretending to be innocent so he can get let off. Yeah. But, There's no. just something about it that just didn't stick. It didn't yeah. stick the landing. Yeah. And um, like, but they, the ideas were there. They, and they just left out a lot of stuff as well, like his 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 condition, for example. The laughing, The yeah. laughing. He only did like, that to start in the rain where he's laughing. Yeah, That's he, the only time he really saw the condition. Literally, really. like, mm. it's, it's an ongoing condition. He's always laughing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. You don't really see it's, much of it. I think the the thing that I sort of noticed in it, which I only realized after watching it, and I know you guys are aware of it as well, is um, Harvey Dent was the prosecutor, mm -hmm. right? And Harvey Dent obviously is two-faced for anyone that doesn't know. Mm -hmm. um, and when the car bomb goes off and the place blows up, he gets blasted into the wall mm -hmm. and his face burns. So my thought now is the Joker seems to have ended. Whether they make another one with someone else, who knows, probably. But... Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll do, I reckon they'll do what they've done with the Penguin, where they'll bring in Harvey Dent and make a oh. HBO TV show or another Have film. Have you seen him in industry? I'm no, I've not. No, yeah, I was, I was it's like, on the I list. I recognise him from industry. Yeah. Yeah. I've not seen industry. My mum's watched it. I've heard great things about it's it. It's really good. Especially really, the first really good. series. Um, <clears throat> and the cast. There's strong yeah. things about the cast. Oh, amazing man. thing. They're, 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 they're an amazing cast. Yeah. They gel well. It's, it's, it's sick. It's so, um, it's, sick. it's like Euphoria meets Succession. That's how it's described to me. Mm. Is that like um, a And now Kit Harrington's a new one. Yeah. That's um, serious. just a question to wrap up <laughs> just cause I'd love to play Harvey Dent. Like if it was a DC villain, I wanted to ask you guys who you'd want to play. That's a good question. Can I, can I, uh, can I just show us your question? Mark? <laughs> oh, oh yes. I'm locked in. I'm <laughs> locked in. I have no other choice. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> can I say who I think you guys could play? Yes. Yo, hit me up. Ooh, switch, it, switch it on its head. Okay, okay. I feel like you, Scarecrow. Yeah, uh, you'd yeah. make a sick scarecrow. Yeah, dude, I see that. Dude, yeah. you, yeah, scarecrow. The <laughs> okay. Scarecrow, okay. That'd be um, sick. Me. But like Batman, Arkham Asylum video games. Yeah, scarecrow. yeah, 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 yeah. Did you play Arkham Asylum? Yeah, amazing. Dude, do you remember when the game yeah. crashed? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I, I took my disc out. I started. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 Me too. I was like, Mom, we got this from CEX, dude. I was like, it's a 41, I'm halfway through the game. My save file, do you know what I mean? And I put it back in, and the same thing happened. And then I did, I was like, you know what, I'm going to let it be. And the next thing you know, it yeah. turned all meta. I got mine from CEX. Oh my God. I only did the first bit where they're on the rooftop. Oh, and then I was oh, like, man. that's it. But anyway, anyway, going back to it, yeah, I think Scarecrow. Scarecrow, I'll take it. Scarecrow. For me, I'd like to play uh, Copperhead. Oh, okay. Oh, which yeah. one's that? That's kind of an alternative from Arkham Origins. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, uh, really the snake. Shit. snake. Yeah, I'm yeah. not flexible, though. So, okay, flexible, then. Like, yeah, better yeah, get yeah, stretching. Yeah, better get stretching. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, yeah, yeah, it's Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent, It's Harvey it? Dent, but it's, okay. young, it's yeah, young Harvey Dent, though. Okay. Young it's young Harvey Dent. Dent. Oh, it's a Robin. Robin. You're a Robin. Mm. Robin. Some, yeah, Damien Wayne. Are you scared? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, interesting. What about Adam? You're hush, mate. Hush? You're hush, dude. I'd really like to play Ray Ghoul. Like, mm. see it. like a young version of him. <clears throat> Not Gotham, Ra's al Ghul, though. No, like Arkham. Arkham. Ra's al Ghul. Yeah, where he falls on the sword yeah. and he disappears and he's like wise and that. Yeah. Mm. Probably like when, when I'm older. Do you know who you'd be? Cool. Who? Oh, the... I keep trying thinking of Mega Mind. It's not Mega <laughs> Mind. <laughs> it's not Mega Mind. It's um, Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter. Martian yeah. Manhunter. Oh, what, from is like he the, more like a, from he's the more DC, DC character, whatever. isn't he? He's yeah, yeah, he's a DC character. character yeah. Yeah. He's too overpowered though. He's green, isn't he? Yeah, he's green. Yeah. He, 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 he destroyed everyone. <laughs> it was oh, yeah, the outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe yeah. Riddler. You guys. Maybe. What makes you yeah, think? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Let's see it. Let's see it. Oh, uh, Seamless segue into another Marmite kind of film. Mm. Mega Megatropolis, Megalopolis, Zoopolis, Megatropolis. That's the cartoon. Metro Boomin. Yeah, I mean, what did you guys think? I, I feel strongly about it, to be fair. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to say I liked the wackiness of it. 
Mm. It's it felt like you know using iMovie for the first time and just throwing a bunch of like clips movie together, maker. movie mm. maker. <laughs> and like there's that in one part school. of the film where there's like three slots and there's like different clips in each slot. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, he's just throw like wow, that's that's so. Mm. I love it because it's crazy. The mm. the music as well and the lighting on the yeah. vibe. The score's nice. good. Yeah. I love the score. Yeah, the score. It, I was listening to it this morning. It reminded me a bit of Babylon. You ever seen Babylon? Oh, yeah, I thought that Babylon. Going into the film oh my like, god, it's yeah. gonna be a hit or miss for people. Yeah. I love that film. People might appreciate yeah. it in a few years. I mean, I I enjoyed the art artistry of it all. Yeah, yeah. But it, I just found it a bit confusing at times. Um, when I did felt, you guys yeah. get to watch it? Like yesterday. Today? Yesterday, yeah. Yesterday. Yes, me too. Yeah. I feel like it's grown on me since I watched it. Yeah, I it's... came out enjoying it and being like, that was mind boggling, bizarre. Mm. I can't wait to just digest it. Um, and since then, particularly watching interviews and stuff like that, there was a lot of stuff within it with, that was jarring. Again, thinking back to The Joker, I think both films were jarring. Yeah. I think this one was intentionally jarring, mm. whereas the other one wasn't. Mm. That's how I felt. I don't know if you guys felt the same. I, I felt like he had so many ideas and tried to fit them all into the time. Yeah. And it was very difficult to do that. I think when I, when I watched the film, I came out of it thinking, I was, I was a bit disappointed because Francis Ford Coppola, mm. you know, uh, Apocalypse Now, The Godfather, like he's got a caliber of films and all of his films I love. So watching it, I was like, it was, it, it hurt a bit because I was so excited for it. it However, a, when I on. slept on it, I woke up and I thought, actually, no, that a lot of the creative choices in that, although watching it, I didn't understand it. Having time to sleep on it and understand that and pa the parallels of that and the Roman Empire, it all made sense. Mm. Talk to me more about the Roman Empire. <laughs> well, it's yeah. funny that because I oh, you got sleep on your time. <laughs> well, I'm ready. It's funny that because I literally <laughs> got back from Rome two days ago and okay. went on a, a bunch of tours and hearing like Francis Ford Coppola in interviews talking about it, the the parallels of Rome and modern day America, what, which is who he was referencing, so we thought we put them together to make mm -hmm. the film. Um, Rome obviously was one of the strongest, em well, was the strongest empire to ever live and. What, what I saw with that is when the, once that ended, it didn't end because they were beaten. It ended because they imploded. The Rome set on fire, burnt, and then it never really recovered from what I've been told at least. Um, what and started the fire? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. What's your source? Who's your source? Yeah. <laughs> well, my source from BC <laughs> was... Uh, yeah. Shh, I can't give my sources away, guys. He's ready, guys. It's Marcus Aurelius, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. The meditations on the <laughs> <laughs> Letters from a stoic. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, literally, the, the references and the, the characters all represented different Roman people. The emperors, you know, obviously the most obvious one was Caesar, mm. Julius Caesar. Mm. That was an obvious one to make people understand that. Yeah. But there were others in there as well. Um, there was a Roman emperor and his name begins with T who ate his kids as fetuses. Um, Mad. Huh? Mad. And the, uh, Mad, and one way to describe it. <laughs> he what? <laughs> he was, um, it's just crazy. This crazy Roman emperor, it begins with T. I, I can't remember his name. I'm sure that'd be somewhere. Something? S somewhere like that. Somewhere like that. Uh, there'll be somewhere up here. But um, he got his wife pregnant, realized he didn't want a kid because... If he was killed, then the kid would inherit the throne and he didn't want to be killed. So he got his, he made his wife have an abortion and then ate the kid as a fetus. He both ate of them. His own kid. And yeah. it made Whoa. you think of Megalopolis. In terms of the, the, the corruptness of it, because the whole power in the film uh -huh. is like five people. Mm. They talk about that wealthy family. Um, and there was a girl in it from Saturday Night Live, which I can't remember her name, but that wealthy family and how the 99% of the wealth and the power were all with them. And no matter what people tried to do, even when the public uprised, it wasn't enough because the, the people they uprised with were people who wanted the power for themselves. I think I think that's like the main theme of both these films. Um, uh, Megalopolis talks about corruption in society, whereas Joker talks about the corruption in the entertainment industry. Mm. Um, like, for example, um, uh, when... when uh, Arthur Fleck gets interviewed and um, they're, they're interviewing like murderers and serial killers, but dramatizing it and making it entertaining. And you can see that nowadays, like in politics, where um, you, you got to vote for like presidents and yeah. it's like, 
and TikTok big, accounts and that. big massive billboard flashing lights yeah. and it's like vote now vote now like like it's a like it's yeah. a gambling game yeah definitely that's a really so. good point actually because it's like this um i mean the <clears throat> one of the main characters that kind of came into power throughout most of the film was what claudio claudio, claudio. Played by yeah, claudio. Yeah. and he initially is like this jester this fool this clown um and it is the performers the jesters the clowns that the public like um are attracted towards they're they're more magnetic they're more charismatic mm -hmm. they might be less pragmatic they might have less actual ideas mm -hmm. but they can draw people in you know if you look at not to get too political but like the people that have gotten power are people that are reality tv stars yeah it's bizarre to think that someone who's not a politician can become a politician i mean it's great to yeah. have that freedom and flexibility but it just begs the question as to whether people are able to distinguish what is actually helpful towards society or what is just something they someone they enjoy watching I and think, listening to i think we as a society have become so self-indulgent that i don't think we actually care but i think we also society has become so unhappy and that was something that francis forkobler was saying in an interview was mm. that so the society is fading and the reason it's fading is because people are le left to keep being unhappy so they're selling happiness um and these things sell happiness and ideas and if you sell happiness it's because people need happiness yeah. because they're not happy mm. and that's what he was referencing in the film as well and i felt like the film was a big message towards that it was a message it was a microcosm of modern day society and the fall of the roman empire and combining the two in a wacky unique creative film mm -hmm. which took a lot of risks like joker and i think some of the risks looking back on them w worked really well i think some of them were a bit like i wasn't as much of a fan but if everything every, if everything's good in a film then it's the Godfather. And not every like, film can be the Godfather. A lot of people are going to watch it in maybe, say, 20 years' time and be like, wow, they didn't realise what an amazing film that was at the time. Mm. You know, there's films like that now from when we look back and we go, yo, that was amazing, but it wasn't but in the moment, critically lauded yeah. because yeah. it didn't fit into yeah. the standards of It's like of a game. What, it's like yeah. when you're on your game and you yeah. play a game when you're younger. And you're like, this was, like, for me, Suicide Squad back in the day. Mm. Wacky, Jared Leno, I loved that. Huh. And that's like such a controversial thing. Oh my God. You like the Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, Suicide Squad film. I loved it. Then now everyone's like, it's terrible. And now I'm like, yeah, man, it was so bad. <laughs> Back in the day, I loved it. I was like, oh my God, mom, this is it. Like, you know, 21 Pilots and that, they, they yeah. were playing, I, yeah. I loved all of it. But yeah, it's like, yeah, in 20 years time, they'll be like, oh my God, this was such a classic. Mm. But like mm. now, again, things have got to marinate. I think some films marinate, some films don't. You just yeah. forget. But I think the, what's it? Megatropolis. Me, 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 <laughs> Metropolis. <laughs> Megalop 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 Megatron. Megatron. Speaking of Megapide. Megatron, Transformers One. I've heard amazing things. Just oh, the animation. Yeah, I've heard really good things. <laughs> Transformers. Weird. <laughs> oh, the news. The prequel. It's like a prequel. Oh yeah. Film. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I bet yeah. you know the villain is. Story. <laughs> the villain is definitely Megatron. It's like the first Joker, but he went to elementary school with robots. <laughs> but no, I think uh, there was a quote uh, that Francis Forkopola said, which was, we live our lives going forwards. We only understand our lives looking backwards. And I think that's important with this film is we're looking at it from a place of going forwards. We'll look back on this and reflect and understand it a bit better because mm, yeah. the film is a message. It's without saying it. Like the best films are the ones where you can't quite figure them out. Mm. because you're constantly thinking about them yes this film felt like it was that on an extreme I always thinking about it yeah every scene i wasn't bored mm. though no. joker 2 i was, I was kind of like now nah, like it's it's like yeah. three quarters into the film it's 1 a.m and you want to get out yeah. yeah but no the mega mega <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah that I was one. interested in that one um, i was really interested in every every scene any mm. final thoughts on megalopolis just to wrap up script was pretty fun it was a fun script mm. the way it was worded it felt like a bit like yeah. shakespeare a yeah. bit like theatre. The way Adam yeah. Driver was saying his words. Just the way the actors were Back saying the their club. words. Back to the club. Back to the club. And whatever. He said something after that was yeah, really clever. Bizarre, man. But like, I feel like Adam, I'm seeing more elements of Adam Driver, which I haven't yeah. as much. Yeah. In that, other films. Yeah. You didn't get that in my story. I felt like someone spiked my kind of coffee. My drinking it. Oh. What was that, bro? I felt like someone spiked my coffee while I was watching that film. 
It was, yeah. it was bizarre. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't mean to. No. Bit just that was you. Did you do it with me as well? Because mine, I felt like the same. Yep, I just yeah. went into the cinema, yeah. dropped it in, and then walked back out. Yeah, How's the guy right. that brushed past you? That's strange. Yes, it all makes sense now because... Um, you put yeah. CBD in your coffee. Yeah, And yeah. you're like, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why are they moving? What, why is the moon moving? Too much CBD. Oh, oh, the, 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 scene, the scene with the moon and like... Gustavo yeah. Frank. Yeah. Why is yeah. that statue moving? According to Gustavo Frank, I love that scene though when the statue in, in the poor. Yeah. I so loved cool. it. I was like, that's really clever. Even though it's like, yes. I thought, what it's the hell not real. It was like collapse of society. As the, like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. But then he was getting flowers from this like perfectly, it was like a poverty stricken area, but there was a flower shop that was like beautiful. But that's cool. how it's it usually is though. A, oh, okay. That's, that's how it usually is in terms of you go to horrible like neighborhoods and then there's just a little gem there. A, a rose like, in a thorn bush. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. A Black Street coffee shop mm. in the midst of Birmingham. By the mm. way, Birmingham is that nice. Mm. One last yeah. thing. Oh, sorry, bro. Well, you're from that, was a me- that was a metaphor. I tried to do something there. It was an improv. I liked it. I did Thank enjoy you. it. Um, yeah, one last thing that I just wanted to fit in, just because time we're running so quick, um, was that I loved... Actually, no, I found it jarring initially at the end where it ended happily. Mm. And I was like, oh, what is this? Like, part of me was like, I want a twist. I want some darkness. Believe, yeah. And then it was only after I was like, isn't it interesting that maybe just me or maybe just society now, we have so much um, cynicism and a lack of hope in our films and mm-hmm. the stuff that we like uh, ingest and digest, that it was weird for me to watch a film that ended on a positive note where we're actually like, we can all choose to think differently and all choose to change society. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's so like, uh, I don't know, 50s Hollywood. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, but it yeah. applies now more than mm. ever it because of the collapse of ever. one old structure and the rise of a new one. Mm. And I think that's what we're, we're, that's what we're in in today's society. We're in the middle of it. The the, the mm-hmm. what I call it 2019 mm-hmm. and everything else after that, um, mm-hmm. because of the old structures not working anymore. So I think in 50 years time, even we'll look back at this film and be like, you know what? There's a lot of there's a lot more yeah. to get from. You know, this crazy man trying to make a new future. But in the film as well, Shia LaBeouf was like, um, he was, Claudio, he was like, you want this world and you do it so well and it's great, but it's lifeless. And yeah. he, he wants he wants this anarchy, but it's passionate. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, there's a lot yeah. of truth in that. Like, he, it's quite minimal. It's quite minimalist, sleek. Yeah. Adam Driver's character's idea of the world in the film. I, but I, f- I feel like this film was, if, if Shakespeare was a filmmaker and he, Tried to make a tried to make a movie instead of a play. Yeah, uh, it was it was. I think that was Ford Coppola's attempt at to try and recreate yeah. some 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 kind of new artistry. Yeah, well, utopia. For the film. I think well, it landed though. Yeah. Yeah. In my yeah. opinion, in that way, I really think it did. Well, Shakespeare still lands today. Mm. Shakespeare kind of lands sometimes. He still hits. He's not half bad. Still, Shakespeare still hits oh, to mm-hmm. this day. But, um, right. I think on that note, that is a wrap. Cut. 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 <laughs>